Hello, welcome back. Today we will be looking at the subject of types of settlement of karma in the series entitled Karma, Destiny and Choice. And I have the pleasure of interviewing Sister Denise, who is a wealth of information on the subject of spirituality. Sister Denise, it's always a great pleasure having you with us in the studio. Thank you. Everyone arrives um, into the world with a karmic load, karmic debt. Uh, so we will talk about how that transpires on another day. But today, let's look at how we actually go about settling the karma. Mm -hmm. um, is there specific ways in which we settle karma? Do we settle it alone? Does it involve others? How does it work? And who and what decides how we settle an account? Yeah, very important questions. The settlement of karma takes the form of some sort of payment because uh, karma that has to be settled is like a debt. So we have created a debt somehow at some time. Your karma is in a sense you have karma with yourself, how much you take care of yourself, how much you do good for yourself, how much you damage yourself. That is also a karmic account. You have an account with different people. Um, you have accounts with those who are in your family, work, community. Um, you know, one of the complications is when there is war and you get an account between large groups of people because they do very bad things to each other and this becomes um, a reason for starting the war all over again. It's very complex, very miserable. Um, there's karmic between you and matter. And your body is made of matter. And so part of the settlement of karma between you and matter is um, in some kind of illness. So you can see now I have a cold, which is some sort of settlement of karma. And you can say, okay, this karma uh, is because of some infection, some bug, some dust, some whatever it is. And then how you settle it, how you handle it, a little bit of meditation, a little medication, a certain attitude that, okay, it's not going to stop me getting on with what I want to do. And you uh, adjust yourself accordingly and the debt is settled in the easiest possible way. There is also karma between a person and the divine because people um, in their relationship with God as devotees, sometimes they are loving to God, sometimes they don't understand God at all, they may be insulting to God or whatever, whatever. And you know in certain religions there are all kinds of proscriptions about how you should or shouldn't interact with God. And some of that is um, quite a deep misunderstanding. But it does come originally from the intuition that there is karma between a person and God. And so your relationship with God needs to be correct. If you remember in uh, the biblical world, you have the Ten Commandments of which four are to do with your relationship with God and six are to do with your relationship with people. And so these um, commandments talk about how you should behave, how you should interact. And um, this is based on human perception. One of the things that we learn in the uh, study and practice of Raj Yoga is that God's understanding about the knowledge of karma, which is a correct understanding, God knows these things, is quite different from people's understanding. So there is quite a disconnect between how God thinks about God and humanity and how people have interpreted that. So between the religious proscriptions 
and what we call Shirimat. You know this word Shirimat is the supreme directions of God or his um, statements about what's what. There's a disconnect there. And one of the uh, purposes of us studying is to look at what the disconnect is, how there is a difference, why there is a difference, and um, bringing it back into line, because then we will not go against the laws of karma, which means we will not have some problems or get into some debts. So how you settle it is quite deep and quite interesting. And there are many different um, ways that you can calculate. If such and such a thing is happening, then it indicates such and such a thing was done negatively or conversely positively. Because karma, negative, positive, is a big spectrum all the way. And there's detailed information about what karma produces what consequence. I want to now go into the specifics. Um, this body that I'm born into, that body that you born into, uh, and the same is the case for uh, a gentleman that we happen to pass on the street. Uh, do we choose the bodies? Is that also karma? We wouldn't use the word choose the bodies as if you have a, a list of bodies in front of you and say, oh, I think I'll have that one. So it, <coughs> it wasn't a buffet before no. we were born? Okay. <laughs> no, but the body that you get born into is strictly according to your karma. And there is another dimension also, which is that you get born into a body according to what is needed by God or by destiny. So if I look at my own situation, okay, I am considering myself as an ancient soul, and the reason I think like that is because of my relationship with spirituality and spiritual knowledge corresponds to the criteria for an ancient soul. Born in a British body, uh, there is some karma between England and India, so there is something about that. Um, female as opposed to male, so a, a soul is anyway genderless. So sometimes in terms of reincarnation, you'll be born in a female body, sometimes in a male body, and you alternate according to your births. Personally, I do not have much karmic account with England or British society because in my life it's anyway part English and part French, right? I have an English father, French mother. But I don't have much karmic connection with France either. Um, why I say that is because I didn't spend very much time in either of those countries in my whole life. Most of my life was spent either in India or in the United States. And India is the ancient land. And my connection with India is very deep. And my connection with people from India is very deep. And so I would conclude from that that, yes, I, I must have had many, many lives in India. I can understand the culture, the language, the ways very, very um, naturally, very intuitively. And, and many of my very deep, intense friendships are with people from India and also from the Arabic world. So I can understand from that that I must have had some births over there as well. And my current life involves traveling a great deal in many parts of the world. So I have quite close connections with people from many places, but I don't really stay very long in one place. And the United States is uh, interesting because my time in the United States is mostly with the Indian diaspora in the United States. So there again, there's a deep connection with India. Um, when I was growing up as a child, 
um, my family had been part of the British Raj in India. So I grew up with things from India all around me. I started wearing a sari when I was 12 years old. I liked it. I liked the Indian things. And um, so I've always had this resonance, you know. So you can understand there is some connection there. Um, but also, I would interpret my connection with the other parts of the world outside India as connected with doing the service of uh, bringing the wisdom of India to different parts of the world because I know the cultures very well. But I don't feel, because I don't suffer from um, these um, bondages with people from different parts of the world. I don't suffer from any restrictions, any like difficulties. So I think my karma is actually quite free. And um, freedom is a very important characteristic for me. So I feel, you know, I study all the laws of karma, I look at myself, and this is what everyone needs to do. Study the information and look at yourself and see how it's playing out. So I feel that being born in this body has kept me um, very independent, very free. So maybe my destiny, because there's also the aspect of destiny, is to be completely unrestricted and to be able to go where I have to go, no restrictions. What you are saying is that the karma that you have determines the body that you get. Yes. Okay. So uh, we settle karma through our body as well, don't we? In terms of illness and in terms of our connection with people that we were born together with, you know, the family members. Mm. You know, my connection with my family is very light, not very intense, not very deep, not much attachment. I could say probably something similar for yourself. You're, you know, originally, ancestrally from Madras, a deep connection with India, but you grew up and you lived in South Africa. And so there's a a freedom, like I have a freedom. Um, one of the things that you have often said is you never really experience being oppressed by the apartheid system in South Africa. So that would also indicate that you are free from that debt between the black, the white, the Indian people. And so you can understand that your karma in that regard is very positive, very good, you see. So we can calculate on the basis of knowing the, um, the laws of karma and then looking at ourselves, all the details of our lives, we can calculate that our karma is not that bad, you know. And are some people extreme suffering. Mm. And you can understand that they must have done something to create that. So we settle karma through the body. Uh, we settle karma through relationships as well, do we not? Definitely, okay. through relationships. Now, how, how does that play out? Is it necessarily uh, mathematically that um, if somebody causes me any harm or sorrow in this lifetime, it's because I've done the same thing to that person in a previous one? We can understand that there has to have been something. The way in which we experience suffering through relationships, maybe we are neglected, maybe we are abused. You know, there are two interpretations. One is, it's punishment, payment. The other is, it's test. The, the point about a test is that it prevents you from getting into an attachment with those people. So your relationship with them is very slight and very light because the relationship not that good. But you get on with life and you 
become fine independently of them. And you don't depend on them, they don't depend on you. It's a, a way to be free and stay free. If there was a very beautiful, loving relationship, you would get tied up with them. And then you wouldn't be free to do what you're doing. Especially in terms of what we call spiritual service. Um, to do spiritual service, you really need to be free. Because from the laws of karma point of view, in terms of your relationship with your family, you have duty. A civic duty, family duty. So if you have a close and good relationship with your family, then you have to fulfill all these duties. But if your relationship with your family is not that great, but also not much suffering, it kind of frees you up from these duties. So in that sense, you have the freedom to do the spiritual service that you wish to do with no restrictions, no bondages of the family. So from that angle, we would say that for this purpose, it's very good. Someone else who, who needs or wants the family connection but doesn't have it, they will feel that that's a punishment. So it's, it's subjective also. Mm. There's also settlement of karma through mental health. Um, we covered settling karma through the body. We covered settling karma through relationships. Do we have a karmic account with Mother Nature? I would say definitely. And how does that play out? Well, on one hand, it's connected with your account with your body. And on the other hand, it's your account with the actual environment. My personal experience with nature is, is very, very good. My body is very fit, don't take medicines, this, that. Very rarely get sickness and that too, not very heavy. I always find myself in very beautiful environments. Um, I have a very deep connection with nature spiritually, you know. So uh, there's a a kind of symbiosis, there's a sense of, you know, that stewardship with nature. Nature looks after me, I look after it. It's a very, very good relationship. And that includes not just the um, plants, but also animals and even the weather, the wind, the sun, the earth, the water, everything. Very, very fluid, very, very good. So, um, but other people, they experience a really bad relationship with nature. And, you know, there are people who exploit nature. Nature is abundant. It gives us everything, food, shelter, beauty, everything. But if you exploit it, you will pay for that by getting deprived, by suffering. I took up the subject with you before, but I'd like to take it up again in the context of today's show. Um, we all born with a karmic debt to the body in respect of our relationships, mother nature, etc. Does that mean we have to stay victims of our own karmic load throughout our lives? Or can we uh, manage our accounts with all these three aspects? Um, in a different way, that it's more self-serving? Uh, is one destined to suffer if you're born with uh, a heavy karma, with your body, with relationships, with Mother Nature? Is, is that the point? Suffer and get it over with? Or, yeah. or just find a way to alleviate the, the account? Um, it's human nature that when we experience any form of pain, uh, we try and get rid of the pain as soon as it happens, or before it happens. Yeah, um, the word suffering implies that you're experiencing something really bad. You can be in a situation where there's a lot of negativity going on, but your relationship with that negativity is that you have the power to endure it, to accommodate it, to manage it. 
then you're not suffering. A person who is weak will suffer. I think the, one of the important purposes of practicing spirituality is that you strengthen yourself. You study so that you strengthen yourself intellectually as well as in every other way, strong mentally, physically, etc. And this allows you to bear what you have to bear without suffering, you see. Now, because you're strong, you can manage it. And this is called settlement of karma through the power of yoga. Because yoga is an energy. You draw energy through your meditation, you draw energy from God. That energy alters how you are. It alters how you handle the different types of um, penalties that come your way so that you're able to manage them and you just take it in your stride. It doesn't mess you up, it doesn't stop you being who you are or doing what you want to do. And you also use it, any kind of adverse situation you use it. We, we have something we call the power of transformation, where you use it to your advantage. How? How does one do that? Sometimes it's like a message that tells you um, you have an ego problem, so use it to overcome your ego problem. Sometimes it's a message to tell you you haven't understood deeply enough how you need to have your relationship, so use this situation to become more skillful in your relationships. Sometimes it's just something to tell you you're out of balance and use the situation to bring yourself back into balance. Sometimes its, um, it's purpose is to free you up and use it to become free from any kind of bondages that you may have, any kind of restrictions. Sometimes you want to pay that debt, so you settle that debt, then you don't have the debt anymore. But you don't, um, which normally people do, you don't react to the debt by making it heavier, is what people normally do. So intuitively you know, okay, I'm settling karma here, let me just finish it, settle it, let mm. it be. Mm. Not resist or dislike or anything. So your relationship with the process of settlement of karma is very positive. Even if you experience like emotional pain, handle that. It takes a lot uh, to handle it. It's not easy on any level to handle uh, a negativity coming towards you. So how does one build up that reservoir of resilience? What's always been told to me, you know, I, I've been practicing Raj Yoga for 45 years since my early 20s and it's always been told to me that it's a great fortune to have a long period of time in the practice of meditation because over time you accumulate this power. As you are passing through different years, you are developing um, your life over your whole lifetime. Uh, you're, you're acquiring the skill slowly, slowly. You're developing it. And you're getting a lot of experience of life. And, and this makes you able to manage tests we think of this as a school, school of life. So you start in kindergarten and you go all the way up. And as you get older, your tests get stronger, more subtle, more intense. But whatever you have had before that makes you ready. Each situation is a preparation for another one. Okay, I think this brings us to the end of today's episode. Uh, there you go, audience. How do we settle karma? And what I liked about it is Sister Denise shared as to how one goes about settling karma with dignity. 
um, which I think is something that we are all striving towards. So I hope uh, today's episode has been of some benefit to you in your personal life and do understand that um, not all karmic accounts should be experienced as suffering, even though it may seem like it at the time. Thank you, Sister Denise. And thank you for joining us. Take care and goodbye. Thank you.